on everybody, hope you're well. Slight change of venue today for this episode and for a few more coming up if that's what you want. We'll go into a little bit later. But they say that the builder's house is the last to be done. Well, no more. This is my house, I'm doing extensive works to it. And I'm going to take you through it all. Right then, let's start. Right, let's start with a quick overview of what this house has been through over the years. It's been for the wars, um, well, quite literally, actually. It was built in about 1910. But in the early 2000s, it was converted illegally into two flats, ground floor being one and uh, first floor being the other. And it wasn't until the occupants of the uh, first floor um, applied for a TV licence that the people within the TV licence uh, realised that the address didn't exist. So that then got passed on to the council. The council then got back in touch with the owner and said you have to convert it back to a house because you had no planning permission for it, uh, which he did in about 45 minutes, I think, because the standard of work in there is shocking. And that's when we bought it. So we always knew that there was work to be done um, a lot of it. So we've done nothing internally at all because no matter what I would have done, anything that needed fixing, painting, anything like that, it would have been doing twice because everything would have to have been uh, ripped out no matter what I'd done it had to have been redone when we got to this stage as we are now so I was very reluctant to do any uh, throw any money or uh, time or effort into it but then days have gone and it's all come to a head so I've got a house to build and I, uh, I managed to save so here we go let's go through it So this is what the house looks like now. As you can see, it's far from finished, but it looks a lot better than what it used to do when we bought it. And this is how it used to look. As you can see, it's been painted that horrible battleship grey. What would you call it? Primer grey? I'll call it horrible grey. There we go, it's all gone. So, it completely ruined the brickwork, and as you can see from the front windows, when they were replaced, whenever that was, all the brickwork or the sills were smashed out beneath it and it's all just unsalvageable unfortunately so I had to go for a block work extension and have it rendered now I've kept this I say I've kept I've rebuilt the chimney on the side just to have a bit of a throw back to to what it maybe looked like back in the day just try and inject a little bit of character back into it but really that's all that's been salvageable now as you can see from the neighbour's side if I can just get you out the sun if that works you can see those bricks there above their window at the roof height well we had those as well except there's no way I could find enough of them in order to um, continue all the way around the house so I took them all out I have kept them I might use them somewhere else but I've reintroduced some more brickwork again just try and be in keeping and I've gone all the way around the house to it down there all the way so that's the external external side of things but we're not really too fussed about that at the moment it's all about the internals now as I said it was converted to two flats now, the only thing that that's done in our favour is that they moved the staircase and they put it in front of the front door there. Now, where that would have been is in this huge alcove that would have been a staircase. So you would have walked down this corridor, down here, get to about three quarters down the house, turn left, up a bit of a winding staircase and onto the landing that would have been here where you could have turned down another corridor, down there, and gone to the front bedroom and that bedroom, or down there, bathroom, bedroom. But, as you can see, it's all been knocked about. That wall is a stud wall, that's not that's original. Um, it, it's just, what they've done here was, I mean, it's, it's horrible really, compared to what, what the house would have been. They've ripped everything out of it. There's nothing, there's no redeemable features left in terms of fireplaces. You know, all, all the character things, that, characteristics that you, you want to see in a house like this, they aren't here anymore. But there we have it. I did find this yesterday. Hearth here. But you see, there's no chimney breast, no chip fight, no fireplaces or anything. So, but 
I'll show, hopefully I'll be able to get them up and use them somewhere, make a bit of a feature. So, original side of the house, it's going. That wall's going, and all the way down the house, down there, all that wall is going. That wall has got to stop, because that's the um, that's structural. Um, chimney breast, that's going. These walls going. Again, these aren't original. They've all been knocked about, all stud walls. They've got to go. I'll show you the loft. We did this loft. Um, we've worked on that over the past couple of years. Um, I'll show you that in a bit. It's a mess up there at the moment, so I'll show you that in due course. So this is it, knocking it all down in its entirety. All the floors are coming out in their entirety. Again, because money. Basically, I've hatched this Fandango plan, whether it's going to work or not, I don't know, but stick with us and we'll find out. That normally, when you knock through into an extension, you put a, a big steel up to hold up the walls above it, maybe hold the floors up, depending which way the joists are going. And then um, that steel then becomes the structural strength of everything above, obviously, and then you knock out everything that's underneath, and away you go. Now, steels are expensive. They're big, they're heavy, which means you need um, extensive labour. You need quite a few people to manoeuvre them, especially in a house like this where you've got a you've only got the front door access, things like that. It's a bit of a nightmare and it can be expensive, but it will be very expensive. And as I say, I'm on a budget. So I've come up with the idea of ripping out the floors in their entirety, knocking out all the walls, top to bottom, in their entirety, and then replacing the floors in the I-beams, um, I'll put a picture of one up now so you know what I mean. Now they can go to greater spans and they're incredibly light to work with and they can hold that much weight. I don't know. I don't know the science behind it. All I know is that they work. So that means then there's no steels and I can put those joists in by myself and do as much work by myself. That's the plan. So the family have moved out. I'll be living upstairs in the loft and we're going for it. So, if you want to watch this, is this the sort of thing that you want? You want this uh, series? It's going to run, as I say, um, in addition to the other job that we've got going on, Mick and Rich are completing that one. I'll be here doing this, so there'll be a video a week from here, a video a week from there. Is this what you want? Just let us know. Put it in the comments, give us a thumbs up. Uh, however it is you want to tell us, let us know. Um, yeah, and then we'll, we'll do it. We don't want this thing to be one way. We just don't want to make a video and post it we want it to be interactive we'd like to answer all the comments or all the questions if there is some um all the silly comments bring them on it's brilliant we enjoy it so um yeah let us know do you want to watch it so here we go so for the remainder episode then i'm going to smash things up the, i'm going to get all the plasterboard in the skip first which means the downstairs ceilings have all been overboarded laugh and plaster are overboarded um, Laugh and plaster are a nightmare, but the ceiling's coming down, so I can just cut the joists, get them down, and then um, we'll go from there. Right, in. let's start. down as expected really just sheets of plasterboard as you can see just nailed on they weren't screwed over the uh, quite lovely wallpaper obviously it would have been a lovely ceiling rose there look oh, it's just a shame it's all been gone obviously there would have been a um, Chimney breast there, and a, or a nice fireplace there. That's obviously gone. You can just see behind that plasterboard there where the air brick is for it. I say obviously. I haven't showed you this yet, have I? Have I? There's the chimney breast there, look. And obviously above that is where the half is in the bedroom. So it's all been ripped out. It's just such a shame, but there's, there's nothing to keep. In a way, it makes our life easier because we're just going to go for it. Now, the reason why I'm not going to rip that down from here is because the whole floor's coming down, isn't it? And I can get them down much easier from upstairs once the floorboards are up. Now then, the plan is, 
Where am I going to put the bricks when I start taking the wall out from upstairs? Well, underneath here, there is a void, which I just sort of flubbered up yesterday. I knew it was here anyway from works I've done uh, previously. There's a void of about 600 mil underneath these floorboards. So a lot of these bricks are going to go in the floor and that's throughout up into that wall where from there into the kitchen is the um, is a solid floor but anyway so um so what i'm gonna do is take a hole out the ceiling here take a hole out the floor and then just drop the bricks fred dibner style straight down into there and then once i've got enough down here i'm gonna take the rest of the floor out and then stack them neatly i can't just pile them in i've got i've got to stack them but that's a job I can do towards the end of the day when it's all getting a bit noisy because I've got to be respectful of the neighbours next door. Obviously, I've got nothing that side, but I have got a young family that side. So that's a quiet job. So I've got to repeat that process now here, which I won't film because it's exactly the same thing. And then we're upstairs. Much of the same. Would have been a nice love, lovely ceiling rose there, but there we have it. So that's all down, that's all in the skip. Now let's move upstairs. And here we are. Right then, the layout of these houses has done us a favour. You've got the front bedroom, middle bedroom, and downstairs, that's the front reception room and the rear reception room. So those two ceilings that I've just took down come to this wall. And then the chimney breast in that wall, in that room downstairs, sorry, is this one here. So, two bedrooms, two reception rooms in this half of the house. Anything beyond this wall, you've got the downstairs bathroom, upstairs bathroom, and then the kitchen downstairs, which means from this point towards the front of the house, we can do whatever we want, and I can still have showers, I can still cook, uh, the boiler's over there, it, it's got hot water, it's all all right. When we move past this point, that's the point of no return. That's the point it all gets ripped out and then we really do have to finish it. So in terms of this phase, we're going to see where our money stretches from doing these two rooms here. Um, I say two rooms, upstairs and downstairs. So that's where we're going to concentrate our efforts on for the time being. It's also worth noting, you'll see these ceilings are down. That was down... Um, last year in the summer of last year i came around for a couple of days just so we could get the um the stairs in and do the loft room and finish all that and get all the wiring done and everything which i'll show you upstairs in a sec so now we're going to do is take this wall down and carry on all Right, there we have it. That's down, gone. I've put the timber down the side of the skip outside and some lady has just pulled up and said, uh, do you want that timber? No, right, I'll go and get a bigger car and off she's gone. So, so there's a bit of skip space, isn't it? I've left those in. Uh, as I say, electrician's coming tomorrow so he can remove them and then away we go. So now then comes one of my master plans into fruition. I'm going to take this wall down first because this wall continues all the way down stairs. It separates the two reception rooms downstairs. But to do that, I'm going to take this floor up first. I know that sounds counterintuitive, but because I've been inspired by the late great Fred Dibner, I am going to take this floor up because we know that there's a 600 mil void underneath it. The side of carrying the bricks down the stairs, I'm going to take some floorboards up upstairs, create a hole, and as I'm dropping the bricks straight through the floor, straight through this floor into the ground, make a pile when the pile's too big, come down and then lay them, lay them properly and pack them into the floor as we go. 
So that's the plan. So I'm going to clear this room out now and then get these floorboards out. Now there's nothing to salvage here because these floorboards are um, fairly new tongue and groove. Obviously in the past it's had a new flooring. You can see the um, the joists there. There's nothing nothing oldy worldy about these. So I'm going to get them up and get them out for people to use as firewood. Now these on the other hand are original to the house and I've got somebody from the recreation yard coming tomorrow to have a look and also around the house to see anything he wants to buy. So I'm going to take a lot of care with these, zero care with them. It's getting a bit late now, so everything I do is obviously very noisy, so I've got to be respectful for the neighbours. I've completely misremembered what went on here. It wasn't the gas main, it was the heating pipes, radiator pipes that went through. There, there, look. And uh, what was happening, the cable's gone through as well, and somehow it's worn a hole in the cable, and it was arcing, and it caused a leak. Um, punched a hole through the copper pipe, and caused the leak so I had to go under and do it. So the gas main actually goes up and into the house and around which we'll uncover some other points. So I could have done that a lot quicker really but there you go. So I'm going upstairs now, quietly as I can, remove some of the floorboards. Might try and create a hole there and set ourselves up for the morning. Right, <clears throat> it's the following morning, well it's been morning actually. Electrician's been this morning, he's disconnected uh, all the things that were in my way so I can safely carry on. It's reconnecting my lights so we're good to go in that respect. Uh, the fella from the local reclamation yard's been out and he said that for these floorboards he could give us 50p a foot so that's worth it isn't it? Just get them up carefully and uh, put them outside. He'll come and collect them up and pay me so that's all right. And also for all the bricks that I don't use in the floor he'll give me 30p a brick uncleaned or 50p a brick uh, if I bother cleaning them, so I've got to work myself there. And what I do, do I spend the time? Is it one of the quiet jobs I can do of a night time without uh, upsetting the neighbours? Uh, I don't know. We shall see. Uh, right then, I shall turn you around and show you what the plan is. Right, here we go. This is uh, today's main operation. Before the electricians came, I um, took these floorboards up and I smashed those holes out there ready for our little shoot. Um, I also took down the rest of the floor, or took out I should say, the rest of the floor that's downstairs, put that outside by the skip. It's already gone. It ceases to be. That'll be on somebody's fire. Now or over the weekend I expect. So what I'm going to do now is drop this straight down there. So I'm going to set you up from maybe this angle, you reckon? And then you can see me slowly emerge. Right, let's get on it. There it wasn't. I'll tell you something, that was an absolute pleasure. The amount of times we've done this in people's houses and every single brick has to be taken down the stairs and into a skip or whatever it is we're doing with them. And everything needs to be sheeted up and get clean just to be able to chuck that down there. It's just brilliant. And that's my pile down there. So I'll spread them out later. I'm not going to do that now because I don't need any tools to do that, obviously. So it's a, a quiet job I can do uh, a bit later once uh, 
when it gets a bit light, just so the neighbours are happy. Um, I didn't use any power tools on that because uh, A, so the noise is kept down again for the neighbours, and so it just didn't warrant it. When we took down the cut up, which is here, because as I say, that's the original gable of the house, um, they just came apart. These houses are great if you don't touch them. As soon as you start touching them, you're in a world of hurt, really. They, just, they look like they're falling down. Don't touch them, they're forever. Start touching them, they just crumble. So it didn't warrant it straight down. Excellent. So now I think I'm going to start there and start taking this wall down and again chuck it down that hole little by little. What I'm not going to do is go too far over here. I might just stop there and chuck it down there because below this room is the dining room and there's another void to fill but there's no point transporting the bricks from there to there to fill that. I might as well drop them straight down like I've just done and then any excess ones that are there are closer to the front door anyway where they've eventually got to go so that's what I'm going to do I reckon. Right then let's get this started. It's getting a bit late now, it's about 10 to 6, so I'm going to stop with the hammering, hammering and the banging, and then we'll go and do a bit of a quiet brick stacking, shall we? Let's go and see how many we got. <laughs> Crikey! Okay then, well, what do you reckon? Are all those going to fit? Place your bets, let's go for it. Bear in mind I can't go to the very top. I've still got to leave room for the floor covering, screed, uh, where are we? Insulation, hard uh, concrete and hardcore. So I'll have a quick workout of how high I can go and then go to that. Right, let's crack on. <laughs> I've knocked a big hole in that. I think with that bit of rubble and all the bricks that are inside, I think I better finish that off. That ain't too bad at all. Oh, well, there you have it then. Right, I think we can all agree, judging by the state of me, and then it's late, that it's time to call it a day. So uh, we have a slow start tomorrow because I've got to go and get some insulation of the materials and take it over to the single story extension job and uh, then back here where we will hatch another plan and uh, play forward. So, on to a new day. Right then, it's the following day. Well, early afternoon actually. It's a bit of a slow start to the day. I had to go and get those materials for the other job. Uh, as I said, and then I came back, uh, hatched a plan, and I will now tell you what that is. Well, as you can see, I got rid of all those bricks, and there's only those very few left over. So I'm quite happy with that, actually. I know I've got to take that down. And then this bit of a wall here, you just can't see the sleeper wall between two rooms. But uh, yeah, I'm quite happy with that. That's all those bricks gone. And so, which means that there's, for the rest of the wall that's to come down up there, 
we haven't got any room to put them down here so we've got to take this floor up so the plan is take this up carefully because we're keeping these floorboards because we can sell them and they're going to make another hole in the ceiling just there and then the rest of that wall upstairs will go straight down down here and then we'll start i think this room is right about the same size as this one but it's going to be a bit better because there that's original floorboards as we know which means that um, very little to no work has been done in this area of the house ever. So, where this was a new floor and there was all bits of rubble and there's a big solid piece of concrete over there and it's all been knocked about, this should be maybe a little bit deeper and a lot cleaner. So it should be a case of get the floor up and away we go. Right then, let's get started. To that that bean that was across there i've had to cut it up and get it out i was thinking about keeping it but what do i do with it plus it's two timbers nailed together and getting it all apart and whatnot that's a shame but it's had to go so as you can see relatively untouched since the day it was built so there we have it so i have a very minimal leveling job to do and then i'll uh, get these bricks in there make a hole about there, I think, and start again. through i'm not going to do that bit it's late now very late actually it's about seven o'clock so um well, i've got smart and all that up anyway i'm going to take that back all the way so it's flush with the blocks so we'll leave that to the daytime hours and then this bit i've left in because uh, we can just see it there you see that dark feeling looks like a piece of, huge piece of timber that's actually um, I don't know if it's sandstone, limestone, I'm not too sure to be honest. Huge ornate lintel that goes across. That's going to be heavy, so I'm going to need a bit of a helping hand to get that out. So all that's racked back just so. Keep it all in place. And yeah, there we go. Happy with that. And all I've got to do is stack that lot. Let's go and have a look at the mess. Well, there you have it. That's all I've got to do now. Do a quiet job and stack them. Just like I did in there. Uh, that'll be today. Right. I think that'll do for today. Right, it's all a bit repeat, repeat, same old, same old, isn't it? Sorry about that. It will get more interesting. Not that I'm going to promise. 
But uh, yeah, please stick with us. So tomorrow, new day, what are we gonna do tomorrow? Get the rest of the wall out from upstairs, drop it down, the thread dip in the shoot, get it all stacked, OCD wise, down here, and then bye bye ceilings. Which the following day, I'm well rested, up for it as you can as you can see. Uh, gotta get the rest of this wall out now. Um, nowhere near as many bricks as there was here. But it should be all right, a huge window, a second lot of space, that's ace, just gotta get that lintel out above it. Um, I might need to call reinforcements to get that out because it's huge and it's heavy. And ideally, I wanna get it out in one piece. If I can, I'd like to use it somewhere in the house. Don't know what for yet. It's been painted black, like we said, the rest of the house has all been painted gray and the features above the windows are all painted black, so. I don't know whether I'll ever, ever get it back to its former glory, but it would be nice to keep it and use it somewhere. Where? I've no idea. But we, we shall see. You can always put it in the comments, any ideas you've got for it. Maybe you've done something along the same lines yourself. So I'll set my trestles up, get a nice working platform along there. And then we'll start. Right, we've exposed all the back of that, got the wooden lintel out. Got the two stones from above off. They were lovely things those are, but... As you can see, all painted black. We'll, we'll see if we can maybe restore them, maybe. But this thing's huge. It's uh, 1440, 260 by 110, solid. So it's a big heavy thing. So what I think we're gonna have to do is lower it down onto here and then, then think of something. Well, we couldn't film it because it all got a bit precarious, but it's out and look at that. Ain't that a thing of beauty? These are the two top bits separate. And that. Look at the detail there, it's gorgeous, isn't it? It's a shame it's been painted black, but I'm gonna look into maybe getting it blasted off, taking it back to its former glory. Because I've got a use for this. I've just measured it. And I've measured where it can go, I and mean, it's as perfect as a random thing can be. But I'm not going to tell you just yet because I want the grand unveiling of where it's going to go in a, a future episode. Because, um, yeah, I'm quite proud of where it's going to go. Actually, it's going to look fantastic, but all will be revealed. Look at that beautiful. Beautiful, another job done. That's quite a simple one really, isn't it? A lot of fireplaces can go to the side and 
really quite uh, quite extravagant, but that one's that one's all right, not too bad. A couple of bricks came out, undermined that lintel a little bit, but it's going nowhere. The wall plate above it's continuous anyway. And the whole point of this is that the wall below this is getting completely removed. But in order to do that, we need a steel because this wall is structural. So um, once the steel's in, then this little recess that's been created now, um, or we've uncovered, I should say, it was always there, will be blocked in off the steel that goes in all the way up. So that'll be a solid wall again all the way up and packed under that lint also. Nothing to worry about there. Excellent. And just as another uh, indication of the poor workmanship that went into this refurb when it got converted either to two flats or back to her house, whatever it was. As you attach your plasterboard, because these fellas just nailed it onto a brick wall. Look, no adhesive at all. There we go. There's a couple of nails there, look. Just nailed straight on into the joints. Brilliant. It was the um the brackets for the radiator that was holding it on really. But there we have it, right? So it's getting late now. Um and then I'll do a couple of skip runs, get rid of some of this. And uh yeah. And then we'll see where we are. Crikey. Look, look, I've swept it, not knocked it down. Um, just to say, I think it's important that uh, if you're a keen DIYer or you know you want to do some house renovations yourself, something like that, and you're not in a trade, don't attempt chimney breasts. This one, as I said, was quite simple, um, but a lot of them aren't. A lot of them are structural to the wall that they're built into. You could be doing some right damage. And if you're unsure what's up above, uh, the previous owners already took it down before roof uh, below roof level. So again, my life's been made quite easy regarding this one. Not, that's not to say that yours is. So um, my advice is don't touch them if you don't know what you're doing. Uh, and it's not really something that you can look on YouTube to and sort of learn how to do it. If I was you, I'd, uh, I'd call somebody in for that one. So there we go. Hopefully that will keep me out of the courts. Right then, another day of smashing the crap out of my house done. Uh, I've got somewhere to be tonight, so I'm going to leave it there. Tomorrow I am going to stack all the bricks that I've chucked down today, get that floor squared away, and then have a thorough tidy up up here, I think. Um, get rid of all the rubbish, all the loose stuff, be it downstairs or skip. And then take the floorboards up. So what we may as well do is cut straight to a bit of time lapse with that. And then we'll see what we're going to do after. Products of a few days graft. Excellent. But forget this wall, forget the chimney stack, forget the chimney breast. The hardest part was just cutting these bricks back down here. I don't know why, but they were absolutely solid. But there we go, that's a worry. So I can finally now see how big our rooms are going to be. Excellent. This is going to be my son's room from where the original wall was. Might pinch a bit, might the landing a bit bigger all the way to the wall. And then this half is gonna be our bedroom, but we're unsure yet how it's all gonna be divvied up. I've got a gen up on my uh, on the regs to where the door can go at the bottom of the stairs. So if it's gotta be a set distance, blah, 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 that will dictate where the door goes, which will dictate sort of the shape of this room. If we have to take too much off it to comply with regs, then we'll might nick a bit of 
his room and go that way a touch so as yes undecided final dimensions but his room will be one big room and our room will be to maybe where the wall is maybe this side of it and then um bathroom or ensuite and walk-in wardrobe over there so yes that's it right happy with that right then what's next uh clean up and then we'll start looking and getting this floor down Excellent. Well, it's the following day. Electrician's just left. I only found him yesterday evening. He was here first thing this morning. Um, sent Charlie around. She's brilliant. And he's got rid of everything electrical wires completely out of my way now. Everything is gone from that point there to there. And then from here, from up to and including that joist, I can take out everything going that way. I don't need to get access that way. Um, because our joists are going to sit on the wall, which is just, you see it there, the wall coming up, it's just to our left of this joist there. So I need to get rid of that one. Those can stay for a bit. That could be a bit of a, an after job. So we're good to go. Um, if you see anything lashed up and you feel compelled to comment on it, um, aim your comments at me, not the electrician, because he's only done exactly what I've asked him to do. And in fact, I'm the one who's put that up on the handrail and I've tacked the light switch onto the bottom of the stairs there. So if you've got any issues, um, uh, direct them at me, no one else, please. Thank you very much. Uh, right then, whilst he was doing that, I went round and got rid of all the heating pipes downstairs. Um, just the beauty of when a house is like this in this kind of state, when I'm bleeding down the system, I haven't got, or drain down the system, I should say, I haven't got to put a hose outside or anything like that. Just cut it off, let it all drain out and um, open all the radiators up just so the air flows through, drain it all out, cut it all out, get it ready for the tap man. So there's nothing stopping me now. I'm gonna put you on time lapse and I'm gonna cut these out with the reciprocating saw, laugh and plaster to the floor, drop all the floor down, firewood. <laughs> Well, let's be totally honest. I didn't really think that one through as much as I have other stuff. Um, I was part way through cutting this one here to get rid of it, and I wondered, well, how am I gonna, how am I gonna get back? And I've still got some tools this side to go from that side. So, the reason why I've done that side first is because I've got all my equipment in this room below. So, make the mess, clean that up, move everything back to there, and then do this one rather than flit it backwards and forwards. So. Leaving that one in place now, scuttling along here, get rid of all my stuff that's here, over there, get rid of that, and then move my stuff, drop this one. I won't film it, I think you've seen enough of me ripping floors down and things, so we'll just uh, cut to the finished article. Well, there we go. Walls and floor out. Not a bad first week. All the wood's outside. Ready for the wood seagull to take it. Honestly, it's like walking past seagulls with a bag of chips. Doesn't last long out there. I think if I was having time again, I'd consider closing that window before I took the floor out. Uh, you know, just a consideration. If you've got any ladders, put it in the comments and I'll come and borrow them. And there we have it then. No turning back now. Well, there we go then. I think we'll leave that episode there. Uh, that's it really. That's the first floor demolished. Floors are out, walls are down. Um, still on the first skip as well. What people have took is amazing, which helps me out. 220 quid a, a skip. We don't want too many of them, so the more people take, the better. Um, yeah, I hope, you, I hope you enjoyed that. This is going to be the sign of things to come, really. Next episode is going to be demolishing all the ground floor stuff, getting rid of all that, um, finally uncovering what's over there, what I built a couple of years ago, something to show you. Um, yeah, I uh, hope you enjoyed it. If you did, let us know in the comments. We always like to receive them, no matter no matter the tone. We like to reply. It's all good fun, isn't it? And uh, yeah, thanks for watching. And uh, catch you next time.